Welcome to the Pauline County Board of Commissioners, August 26, 2014 work session. I'll call the meeting to order and welcome all of our guests and elected officials. I see Mayor Debbie uh, in the back. So thank you all for being here. I'll remind you to turn off all cell phones, next tells and pagers as it does uh, interrupt the production. Uh, um, Mike, before we have our invocation, I think you want, we had a pretty rough uh, week and weekend. I think you might want to give us an update. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll be brief. Um, you know, we, we thankfully live in a county that has tremendous support for our uh, public safety folks, and they do a fantastic job protecting the citizens that live here. Um, it, it's we, We've had a, a, a run of, um, I, you know, I, I don't know how to classify these, and I don't want to, 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 to glamorize the incidents at all, but... Yeah, you know, we, we had the trail incident several weeks ago. Um, you know, this past Sunday, we had a, a murder suicide that involved an infant where um, you know, Sergeant Richardson and Deputy Swain and Deputy Brumman responded to that. And then um, Corporal Dooley was the crime scene technician that had to go in. And, and, and that weighs heavy on them. That, that was not a, 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 um, a pleasant exercise, but it's part of their job. And, goes beyond what you see on the job description. Um, yesterday, we had an incident where uh, there was a phone call into our 911 center, and you know our communication officers deal with this every day. I mean, it's, it is a difficult, difficult job. And there's a, there's a, there's a young uh, infant female who is unconscious, who's, who's gotten into some water, and uh, one of the marshals, uh, marshals Jared Gunner, responded, heard the call, got there, Gave that young infant, um, you know, a second chance at life. The infant's doing better, not out of the woods. But, but these are the types of things. We just had a bunch of them come together over a short period of time. I, I think it's just incumbent upon us to recognize that they have an incredibly difficult job. And that doesn't take anything away from our fire department who responds to those calls. And, and these things happen behind the scenes every single day. We don't see it. You don't see it in the paper. You don't read about it. But it happens. I think it is fantastic that we have such a good group of people serving folks in all the county. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Rodney Carson. <laughs> Pastor Rodney Carson with uh, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. Uh, if you'll include that in some of your prayer, uh, we would appreciate it. Uh, this gentleman puts on one of the finest uh, wild game uh, suppers probably in the southeast and uh, I guess it's coming up sometime March, uh, the first week of March. Okay. Uh, 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 and also uh, if you do our pledge, would you stand with me great? <coughs> well I pray I make a quick comment. I just had a meeting with a, a missionary from southern India um, and last month they had fourteen pastors arrested. On Sunday morning, for singing and praying in church. Um, spent three weeks in jail. So I just want to thank the commission in this county that uh, they provide, they do allow us to observe the religious freedoms that I think our constitution guarantees us by uh, leaving the location at your meetings. So just pray. Uh, my Father, my God, I, I come this morning and, and first we praise you uh, and thank you uh, as our creator and our provider and our sustainer. And Father, we. Uh, we thank you and praise you because you are worthy of that. And Father, as was mentioned earlier, we do lift these uh, individuals up in our public safety, our, our police, and our marshals, and our fire department. Father, they deal with things that uh, are here most of the time unaware of. Father, I know it has to weigh heavy on their hearts at times as they deal with situations that uh, deal with the things that remind them of the, the dangers that their families may face and may go through. Father, we pray that you encourage them and lift them up and the families involved in these situations that were mentioned. Father, we pray your comfort on them. Father, that you would just wrap your loving arms around them and give them what they stand in need of. Now, Father, we pause to ask your guidance not only in this meeting here today, but Father, for this county, the state, and this nation. Father, that we be follow your precepts and Father, let your word be the guide to our lives. That Father, we would conduct ourselves in ways that would bring you honor and bring you glory. I pray again your guidance on this meeting this morning, these commissioners, and thank you for their service and their time, and, and again, the, the public servants of this county. 
Father, we just pray you again. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
situation and was one of the first on the ground. And whereas on May the 6th, 2014, Captain Mullen was honored by the Optimus Club of Trenton Day as a Law Enforcement Appreciation Officer of the Year. Whereas Captain Butler sets a fine example of a true law enforcement officer who represents our great state of Georgia with honor and integrity. She puts public service and safety of our great state at the top of her list. Now, therefore, I, David A. Austin, Chairman of the Paulding County Board of Commissioners, do hereby honor Captain Sherry Butler for her faithful service to Paulding County and the Northwest Georgia region. Thank you. Appreciation Award to Firefighter Scott Brown with the Paulding County Fire Department. And I believe, uh, Captain, I believe you have something to tell us about it. Try to come forward. Good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce Firefighter EMT Scott Brown for the Paulding County Public Safety Award. Firefighter Brown started his career with Paulding County in 2007 and has proven to be a huge asset to the department. He's currently assigned to Station 1 in Dallas and he's a task with performing numerous extra assignments. Uh, one such assignment is being a certified technician to maintain and service our department's self-contained breathing apparatus and the importance of this assignment cannot be overstated because it deals directly with the life safety of our personnel as well as uh, them being able to go into the hazardous atmospheres and fires without his help we wouldn't be able to uh, to do his um, his commitment to certify these he knows it's the life safety of all his personnel and uh, i can't i just can't overstate that scott's also attended fire instructor school he's gone and uh, went on to the academy on his own time to be state certified fire instructor as well as a fire control instructor to assist with the training of the new fire recruits he also assists with our annual live training learns that all firefighters have to do each year. He recently developed a training outline for interior search and rescue and rapid intervention team operations. Then he conducted the hands-on drill with all the personnel on the ship. He's currently developing more classes, such as an outline for vehicle extrication training plan. He plans on teaching those in the fall. Scott also volunteers to instruct personnel on the operation of the fire engine from hydraulic calculations of the fire pump to get the fire engine safely to the scene. He's also assessed with testing personnel on pump operations and aerial ladder operations so they can be certified to operate these uh, apparatus at the emergency scene. Firefighter Brown's a constant professional with an outstanding work ethic. He has a passion for the fire service and a willingness to serve the citizens as well as his fellow firefighters. Paulding County is very fortunate to have such a dedicated employee and Scott, we appreciate all your service. Yes, no bid awards, no reports from committees and departments. 
Uh, do we have anyone wishing to sign up for public participation? No one signed up. Consent agenda, discuss uh, two consent agenda uh, items. Number one, adopt job classification 91 system coordinator for Paul County 911. Uh, Brian, your name is on here. David, uh, yours too. You want to talk about exactly what these two positions do. And number two, adopt job classification business license technician for the uh, Paul County Marshals Bureau. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, both fairly routine items on the 911 position. This is uh, one of the things that I folks always want to know uh, what about money. Uh, this is a reallocation for an existing budget and position. Taking positions sort of in the budget, we're establishing this classification. It's not adding to the headcount, so it's sort already of covered if you're voted. Um, basically, to better address the departmental needs, uh, they would certainly respond a little better to this, but. Uh, coordinating the 911 center, center equipment software program, doing technical training for the employees, maintaining the system, uh, maintaining the database, doing troubleshooting and repairs, things of that nature. Also serving as a liaison uh, between David, uh, the director, as well as vendors and, and other folks making recommendations for upgrades and changes. Any questions? Like you would be one of these two items of retrocession. New business discuss action to authorize the chairman to sign and submit the annual Association County Commission of the Georgia ACCG Safety Discount Verification Form Finance. Good morning. This is another uh, money item that I'm proud to address with you. Uh, as you know, we do our workers' compensation as well as our liability insurance through ACCG and they offer safety discounts to entities that are members and can uh, meet certain safety criteria. On the liability, um, the maximum benefit is 5% or maximum of 5,000, so that, that's limited to that. But on the workers' comp side, it saves us about 100,000 a year. It's a 7.5% discount. Uh, we'd be remiss not to mention that part of our being able to get this discount is attributed to Chief Earwood, as well as Tara Palmer in my office, who did a lot of work towards meeting the criteria. Uh, they've obtained the Safety Coordinator 3 training that's required by ACCG. That's the highest level that they have at three different levels. Uh, they also ensure that we have safety meetings uh, quarterly, that there's monthly safety materials distributed, uh, other items like having a personnel policies in place, having all the compliance with the State Workers' Comp Board, uh, run motor vehicle checks on folks when we hire them and routinely thereafter. A variety of items like that that does help on our risk management and as a result we get this discount. And asking that you confirm that and we'll submit it to the discount. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. For the record, I need to mention there was no old business. Under new business number two, discuss action to accept a grant from the Georgia Department of Transportation including a pass-through from the FAA to fund the environmental assessment at the Paul and Northwest Atlanta Airport. Grants shall not exceed $299,095. Grant provides 95% funding for, for the project. The remaining 5% shall be paid by the Paul County Airport Authority. Lex Walker. Morning. 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 Uh, this is a redo. Uh, I did bring uh, this grant to you. I guess it's been about uh, six weeks ago now. Uh, however, we had four different things changed, uh, which all required uh, this agenda item to come back to you. So I'll explain what those four changes are. Uh, the first change is the dollar amount. Uh, originally, we brought the, the grant to you, and the uh, amount was about 165,000. Uh, due to all of the uh, comments that were given to the FAA during the uh, public advertisement of the scope of the environmental assessment, uh, the scope has gone up quite substantially and we have now gone through, I guess, probably between eight and ten revisions on the scope of the environmental assessment. 
Uh, the scope has now been finalized. It's been accepted by the FAA. It's been accepted by the Georgia Department of Transportation. And uh, the current scope uh, anticipates a cost of uh, $299,095. So that's the first change. Uh, the second change is uh, previously the grant uh, was brought to you as a direct grant from the FAA uh, to the county. Uh, that has changed as well. Uh, that was the, the local FAA office in Atlanta, the ADO, had, uh, had expressed a, a desire to issue that grant directly instead of issuing it through the Georgia DOT. Uh, however, uh, subsequent to that point in time, FAA headquarters in Washington, D.C. Uh, made the final determination that no, they did not want to issue the grant directly. Uh, they would issue the grant through Georgia Department of Transportation uh, as they have issued all of our grants over the last five years. So this grant is now coming uh, to us via the Georgia Department of Transportation. So the Georgia Department of Transportation uh, is the entity that executes the grant now. Uh, the third change is the, uh, the cost share. Uh, previously, this was a 90-10 grant, so 90% 90, 90 was to be paid by the FAA, 10% to be paid locally. Uh, that percentage is now broken out to 90% FAA. That has not changed. However, the state is now paying, picking up 5% costs, so the cost share is now 90% FAA, 5% state of Georgia, and 5% local. And the last change, the fourth change, uh, deals with that 5% local. Uh, that 5% is now going to be paid for by the Paulin County Airport Authority, uh, not the Paulin County Board of Commissioners. So those are the four changes which uh, all in and of themselves would have required us to, to come back to you. But uh, we're able to get them all done at one time now. And uh, as soon as this grant is executed, I will be able to start the actual work on the environmental assessment for the airport. So there's questions that we're going to address. Questions. I may have just a couple questions. Um, what about the contract? So the contract's not coming back to us? No, so the contract will not be executed by the Board of Commissioners, it will be executed by the Paul County Airport Party. And why why would that be? Uh, there are three reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is that the airport authority is paying for the match. So since the airport authority is actually paying for it. Uh, then it only makes sense that the airport authority execute the grant. Uh, the second reason is that we have uh, talked with FAA and uh, Georgia DOT about the grant assurances that uh, we have agreed to over the past 10 years since we've been accepting grant assurances from the, uh, from the state and from the FAA. Um, you may or may not have noticed in this grant that this grant is actually being executed by both the Board of Commissioners and the Paulding County Airport. Uh, that is a change. In the past, those grants have only been issued uh, to the Board of Commissioners, not to both entities. Uh, however, the, the state, along with the FAA, have evaluated uh, the makeup of the airport authority in the county and how the airport is operated, and they have determined that both entities should be uh, on the grant. Uh, not only have they determined that both entities should be on the grant, uh, but the grant assurances that actually apply specifically to the uh, airport authority have to do with the title of the land and policy and operation and that the other contracts associated with the airport are executed by the airport authority. So we actually, even though we have a history of engineering contracts being executed by the board of commissioners, uh, the operational policy is set by the airport authority uh, the 139 certification that was submitted to the FAA was submitted by the Airport Authority, uh, so therefore uh, it is more in line with, uh, with, I guess, what would be the recommended practice uh, to have the Airport Authority execute the EA, since they are uh, the entity that is actually pursuing the 139. It's not the Board of Commissioners that are actually pursuing the 139. Uh, So how will we, at the May 27th meeting, you kind of explained it to us, and you said this when that was when we were dealing with 167000 and you said it would come back to us, and uh, we would vote on a contract for the LPA slash Michael Baker Group. So we're not voting on that contract now. Yep. I know we're not now because it's not in our on our agenda, but then you explained that we would be voting on it 
And so my question would be, why would we not? And then the other question would be, we, you kind of explained it that as things went along, when, when certain parts of it got done, that we would be writing a check, right? At that time, we talked about writing a check, and then we'd be reimbursed. Correct. So how is that going to happen now? Uh, it, it, the procedure as far as the reimbursement of the grant hasn't changed except the checks will be written by the airport authority and not by the board of commissioners. So uh, the, the four things that I discussed at the very beginning, uh, the, the changes to right. this grant, are, are the things that are in, in part driving uh, the fact that this project is, or the contract that it is, is not coming back to you. Previously in May, you had committed to pay $16,700 as part of the match. Now you're paying nothing. The airport authority. Well, and I completely budget. understand that. My question is, I'm not trying to be argumentative, but my question is, I understand that we're not paying that at that time. It was going to be 10 percent. Now it's five, and we're not paying either one. Correct. But we were also running everything through our county office, and Tabitha was going to pay for things, and then we we're going to re be reimbursed. Correct. So you're going to do it at the airport level all the money now yes you've got all the money to be able to do that and wait for it to come back yes that is what will be done now yes sir. Okay. so so in other words other than the checks will still be written following county because we are the we're in the page system right. instead of creating a new one but so when which now my understanding y'all have the airport authority has already approved michael baker group to do the they voted on that last week Yes, sir. Okay, right. so when Michael Baker Group submits your contract a bill, you will pay them and wait. You have the money to pay them whatever they want and wait for the grant to be reissued. You'll handle all of that. Yeah. Now, other, as far as the administration of it, the billing, all that, all that will happen is the county department will receive the money and turn around and write you a check and she'll have to do an audit for it. That, that is correct. Okay. A um, couple of questions since y'all already, or if you still got more, can I ask, man? Mm. Ask yours because it might take care of mine. Okay. Uh, now, since you've already selected the, uh, the contractor, as part of the agreement in the grant is you have to have DOT sign off on Michael Baker Group or whoever, so you already have that. Yes, that is correct. State DOT as well as the FAA have both already uh, agreed to the contracts with uh, Michael Baker. They have already reviewed uh, all the costs, all the hour estimates, uh, everything. They, they have signed off on all of that. Okay, and now the other question is that in this grant it states that the airport authority or, or they call it the airport is hiring a separate consultant to do a separate study which has to be included in part of this according according to this it says an aviation uh, activities forecast is being prepared by a separate consultant to the airport which shall include the service-based airport the question is who is that other consultant who is the other consultant yeah it is um Mary Lynch, Lynch and Associates, out of, uh, out of Texas. Okay, and the airport authority has contacted with, contracted with her, or is that a contract by somebody else? No, it is the airport authority. Yes, sir. Okay. Airport Authority last week, which I was at the meeting, they've already approved and you've already got the contract for this sign with the Michael Baker Group. The contract's not signed, but it has been approved. But they, because the Airport Authority approved it. That's correct. Okay. Yes, okay. I got a question about the Georgia DOT deciding to participate in the funding. Yes, sir. Do you know why they decided to ante up their 5% as before? they weren't going to contribute at all? Yes, so the reason is because before the contract was going to come directly from the FAA to to us, so it was going to bypass the state. Yeah. So since they were going to bypass the state, the state uh, chose not, not to participate in, in the funding. Uh, now that they've gone back to the traditional 
practice uh, coming through the state DOT with it, the state is going to participate at their 5% that they normally do. Well, I showed now 5%, the county's at $14,954, where it would have been at 16000 I think you said 700 Yes, so it's actually a cost savings to us. Yes, sir. Now, public participation, as I've read through this, what Michael Baker group, as I understood what I read, mm -hmm. they are responsible for public comment documents, for answering questions and providing documentation, but I didn't think that they're not going to hold a public meeting. They're not responsible for holding a public meeting. That, am I reading that right? Because in one of the sections it says any additional public outreach activities would be billed. And when you read about public involvement, it doesn't say they will hold public meetings. Am I correct on that? There's multiple different ways to get public participation and public involvement. Uh, one of those has actually already been done, where we advertise the scope of the EA, the draft scope. And we received over 100 comments, including uh, massive documents from law firms out of Washington, D.C., and environmental consultants out of Gwinnett County, and, uh, and all kinds of stuff. So we've already received a tremendous amount of public input, right. but there will be another round of public input once the, uh, once the final EA document is put together. Um, the decision as to how that will be done has not yet been made. Uh, FAA will play a, a strong role in deciding how that is done. Okay, so then I guess what I'm getting at then is if they choose to hold a public meeting, then which at this point it's not been decided that there will be a public meeting, correct? Yes. But if they choose to, any cost beyond what is listed in this thing, in yes. this agreement, that Michael Baker group incurs, such as if they're, you know, if they're, whatever they might have to do, right. you may get billed for that. We may get billed for it. Most likely what will happen is uh, if the FAA wants us to go in that direction, we will certainly ask for additional funding to cover it. Uh, that would be more typical. Um, but if you're just talking about a, a, a one public meeting where they have, you know, a couple of staff members show up with, with exhibits and documents, we're not talking about a lot of costs. Right, and, and, and I guess I'm, I'm getting at it. I know there was some perception over the last six months that there was going to be a public hearing on this. But in essence, according to this scope, it doesn't actually spell it out required or, or say that there's supposed to be one. There's just supposed to be public input. That is correct. Yes, okay. sir. And Blake, I read through the 65 pages also. I don't have it in front of me, but their periodic payments instead of a one final payment or instead of one payment there's like eight different payments um, I don't know that there's a specific number of payments there there are periodic payments these types of, uh, of projects are done on an hourly basis because it's all professional services fees so it's all billed hourly so they, they will submit usually uh, usually one invoice a month is typically what we see my last question is, when are they anticipating completion of the EA? I get asked that question about twice a day. Um, the difficulty with, with answering that question is, as we go through the process, there are about uh, a dozen or so different agencies that are involved. Everyone from the EPD and the Corps of Engineers, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and FAA, State Historical Preservation Office, and that could go on to the list. So as, as we uh, complete work and submit it to different state and federal agencies for review, uh, they have time to uh, make their comments and make their review and submit it back to us. Sometimes that's done very quickly, very expeditiously. Other times it seems to take forever. So um, you know, the time frame will take LPA to do their work is probably four to five months. The time frame it will take for all these other agencies, state and federal agencies, to review, give comments back, revisions to be made. I, I can't give you an accurate answer on that because that's totally outside of our control. Um, this, I mean, this is not, well, Chief Earwood Station and uh, Mr. Munford's new location is highly tied to this. So 
in reality, in, in, in real terms, you're looking at a year probably before we're cleared to rebegin construction on those facilities of the fire station and the 911. Because if it's going to take Michael Baker group five months, it took, what, six months just to get to this, this format. So, it, it, so you're, you're looking at a year, another year's delay from today, probably. It, it could take a year. I'm hopeful that it will be more like nine months. It shouldn't take any of those agencies more than 30, 45 days to provide comments back. But then there's also a public comment that you got to deal with. And the public comment should should be done, uh, I think, simultaneously. Okay, uh, so it's done as part of the Michael Baker study, because I thought once they had a preliminary, they have to then submit it, get it back, revise it according to, to this. It's okay. kind of going to be the FAA's call on that as to, as to at what point they will allow us to do that. You know, it's not that the entire document has to be complete to be submitted to the agencies. When you finish the section on, uh, say, for example, uh, historical preservation, historical you, could, you could give them their Exactly right. So we're not waiting four or five months before we send this out to any agencies. It's going to go out to, to the agencies as soon as their section of the document is complete. So I, I'm hopeful it can be done inside of nine months. All right, I appreciate the job you do. I've got a couple more, if that's okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's been long, but um, I, I guess well, Tommy just brought up a point, and um, not that we can get in this discussion, and I don't care to right this minute. But we talk about the fire station, we talk about the 911 center, um, and it being, you say, in a year, or Tommy saying a year, you say nine months, and I, I think it's probably going to be a year. Um, and I'm, Mike, I'm, I'm trying my hardest not to, to, to sound negative, but the bottom line is, I would have never voted to put a 911 center at a commercial airport. And um, my vote was was to put the 911 center there. My vote was to put the fire station there for the public. It, had I known that y'all were working on a commercial airport, I would have never, I would have never, would have never voted to do that. I, I don't know that in this country, and I haven't researched this, so I don't have the answer, but I don't know that in this country that we've been building 911 centers at commercial airports since September 11, 2001. And um, that's been the number one thing that we looked at for security in this country and our country's tried to outside of this country. And so it's hard for me to believe that that would be the thing for us to do, to put a 911 center at a commercial airport. I voted to put it there at the General Aviation Airport. Um, some of the Which, questions... Now that can be challenged. I mean, this Board of Commissioners can choose not to build that there. I mean, that's right. So we can direct them to build it somewhere else if that's a concern. And I know that I know that the sheriff's been waiting a long time to get space. I know that we need a 911 center, and um, I know we can find another place to do it. I just want to make it clear that I voted to put a 911 center up there along with y'all, but I my vote would have been no had I known it was commercial. Would not have done it. Um, Certainly doesn't make any difference to the airport authority whether they say or not. And, and some of my questions today is because I, I, I'm supposed to trust the department head, and this has nothing to do with you, but I'm supposed to trust the department head to bring me information so that I have all the information so that I can vote to the best of my ability with the same information that everybody else has. When you brought this grant to us in May, at first, it was going to be the, I think you call it the pass through that grant, the DOT, and then, right. it, then it changed. And you explained to us in that meeting, and you did a good job. Um, and so it's changed a couple of times, so that's kind of why I'm, some of my questions. One of the things that you said back then, uh, if I can pull up my notes, was that you were going to come back to us with the Michael Baker group. Because the, and I know you've already answered this, but you said you were going to come back to us with the Michael Baker group because it was a contract over $50,000. And I understand that y'all were holding it, handling it now. 
but that was one of the reasons you were going to come back to us, and that we were the FAA considered us as being one of the sponsors, I guess is what you call it, one of the owners, the airport authority, and us. I know that we own property out there, the board of commissioners. Um, so it has brought up a lot of questions, and I think Tommy got a lot of them asking you. You've answered quite a bit, but when it changes this many times, and we've gone from 167 to 299, which, which I'm glad, it looks like they're going to do more of what they need to do. But in that meeting, too, we were kind of told it wasn't going to change. It was going to come back to us, both the contract and the FAA grant. Um, so a lot of things have changed, and here we are today. So that's why I've had the questions that I've had. So don't don't take it personally. Um, no, and this is the first grant we've ever been issued that is in the name of both entities, the Airport Authority and the Board of Commissioners. This, this is brand new. And with that said, I understand that it's in both of our names. But it's kind of hard for me to understand that it wouldn't still come to us for us to vote on them, Michael Baker Group also. Okay. Because the grants in both, I know you've explained it, but okay. still, I still feel like it should probably also come to this board. Appreciate your okay. So I recall part of the savings was that we already had the land at the, uh, on the airport tract, so we wouldn't have to buy another tract of land to build another one. So, I don't know. Well, there, there were two items of savings there. One is you didn't have to purchase the, the land for the 911 and the, and the joint fire station. The second savings was that we ended up using FAA money to move the dirt to do the earthwork. And the third savings was that the stormwater system detention uh, was, our, was already in, so there was a, a huge cost savings to the county for selecting that location. They really didn't have that much to do with the fact that uh, it was an airport, it was, it was a cost savings across the board. I think even with that said, I think that's definitely something that we need to go back and look at. This board needs to, if we're going to be a year from now, I guess, Mike, we're going to be bringing another contract or something else up for that because that one's passed. And so I think it's definitely something we need to look at. And I can tell you my vote will be different if that's the direction that we head in. It's, it has nothing to do with you, but I'd like to see the Sheriff's Department get the room that they need. I'd like to see us get a new 911 center. And we've talked about it for the three and a half years I've been here. So um, we might need to look at moving in a different direction with that. Thank you. Uh, number three, discuss action authorized the chairman to execute an intergovernmental agreement on behalf of the county with the Georgia Department with the Georgia Department of Public Safety for the construction of the Georgia State Patrol Public Jason. Commissioners, uh, this and the next item are related. This deals with the proposed state patrol post out of, uh, <coughs> out of the water system building out on uh, Bill Creek Parkway. Uh, what this is, this first item, item three, I believe it is, is an intergovernmental agreement wherein essentially the county is agreeing to go into the building and make the improvements to the building that will be required in order for the state patrol to occupy it as a headquarters and barracks. Uh, pursuant to the agreement, the county will retain ownership of the building, and once the improvements are complete, the state patrol will come in and occupy it and operate uh, their state patrol operations from that location. That's it in a nutshell. <coughs> we have to answer any questions y'all may have on that. I'll ask you one, then I'll ask Chuck, man. Um, they'll be easy, Chuck. Uh, in a nutshell, this memorandum of understanding is so that as soon as it's done, they can move in, but then we will turn around and approve an official lease for the facility as I read it, correct? That's a great question. There are really three vessels here. One is this IGA to build it. Once it's built, there will be a, the next item on the agenda, which is essentially a temporary occupation agreement. Okay. Uh, that'll just be a placeholder in place while the county and the Georgia State Property Commissions work through a third document, which will be the official long-term lease. Which will be a 49-year lease. Okay. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. In this process, one of the things that talks about it, at this stage, we don't actually have 
or do we have approved plans that they've signed off on exactly how we're going to modify the water department building? No. Okay, so, so it talks about an architect. So we haven't engaged that architect to officially, I know we've engaged one to do some stuff, but he's not been instructed to officially draw the plans and for them to we, sign on. You've seen the conceptual drawings that we presented at previous meetings. I've got both agreements for the site work plus the architectural work sitting on my desk awaiting an instrument to be put into place that we've got a clear understanding between Baltimore County, Department of Public Safety, and Georgia State Properties Commission. And this is this is essentially an interim vehicle that allows us to keep moving forward while we wait for that long-term lease to be executed, which I understand will be executed once we get those renovations complete. Okay. And I think this is in the memorandum of understanding. Uh, it, it actually talks like during that phase, the county will be responsible for repairs, maintenance, and any routine property, any, any maintenance, until there is a lease sign. Is, is that? That is correct. That is correct. And again, okay. that's, the intention is to do a very short-term agreement. All right, but now once the lease is signed, it's their responsibility to pay the electric bills, utility bills, normal property management or our maintenance or are we still going to have to maintain all that? The, again, this comes back, this is an interim vehicle to get us to a point. Part of public safety does not have funds to put toward uh, keeping maintenance until that long-term lease. With okay, State so, so when the long-term lease is in place, then they'll provide all that. They will. That, that is the understanding and that was on the comments that we sent back on our lease agreement uh, draft that went to the Georgia State Properties Commission. Yes, Commissioner Graham, in the memorandum of agreement there is a sentence I had inserted which says it is the intention of the parties that once the long-term lease is executed that routine maintenance will be borne by the Department of Public Safety. Okay. Any other questions? Number four, discuss action items authorize the chairman to execute a memorandum of agreement on behalf of the county with the Georgia Department of Public Safety authorizing the Georgia State Patrol to use and occupy county-owned property at the Georgia State Patrol post and barracks prior to the execution of a long-term lease with the state of Georgia for the summer. Jason. Commissioners, that is, that again, that's vessel number two. That's the memorandum of agreement that allows them to come in there on a short-term basis. Number five, discuss action authorized the chairman to enter into a contract with Bell South Telecommunications LLC doing business as AT&T Georgia to upgrade the current computer-aided dispatch system and to assume the maintenance responsibilities for the CAD system in the amount of $273,781 with monthly reoccurring cost of $10,323 a month. Morning. Before I talk about the agenda item, I would like to, to make the announcement that as of last week, all four of the major cellular telephone vendors are able to text to 911 in the county. So we made our, our last rollout. We started out with Verizon in April, and we've uh, rolled out up until uh, at and rolled out last Wednesday. So uh, now any major carrier, any uh, anybody that has a contract telephone can text us as opposed to making a call if they can't make a call. We're the first in Georgia. We're still the only in Georgia. Uh, yes, there's, there's I think three other agencies that have put their request in. We're the only agencies that are rolled out. Uh, we have Floyd County is coming over to visit with us tomorrow to see our rollout so that they can make plans to, to move forward on their implementation. So, yeah, we're still the only uh, agency in Georgia that can receive text messages. Uh, what's the little saying? Uh, call if you can, text if you can. Right. Call if you can, text if you can. And so far, uh, we've received total of three calls, none of which were emergency zones. So. Mm -hmm. three, 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 well, yeah. three, three texts. There's still calls for us. We received three texts. No no emergency texts. The last one was, a, I think, a three-year-old who got a hold of his mother's telephone and tried to send us a photograph. So. <laughs> it, it scrubbed the picture and we got the, the letters and words that came across until mother picked up the phone and realized who he was talking to. Uh, the, uh, this agenda item uh, is a uh, upgrade to our current computer-aided dispatch system. It replaces our entire system, the software, the workstations, all the servers, 
that brings in a completely new system. Uh, and we, in the past, we've been a direct customer with Interact Public Safety. In fact, we have a, a representative of Interact in the attendance today. Um, we are in this. We're we're proposing to move to uh, AT and T, take over the maintenance and uh, uh, implementation of, of this particular CAD system as opposed to Interact. And the reason is we're we're getting a cost savings through AT and T's buying power. And they also we have on site uh, maintenance with AT and T. They can send someone on site to to do some of the work if we have a major outage. They'll have somebody on site uh, fairly quickly. Uh, it's a cost savings to us. Over it's a cost savings to us over what we would pay for the upgrade from Interact. So we'll be paying more than we are paying now in monthly reoccurring charges, but we're paying less than what we would be paying if we went with Interact Direct in order to do this through AT&T. And they have technicians that are trained on this particular CAD system. Uh, this is a next generation CAD. It's, uh, it has uh, flexibility that we don't have now. And for instance, in the future, it has the potential of being hosted in the cloud. And if we were to have to evacuate the 911 center, then we could go to any place that had potentially a internet connection, sit down and take calls. So that, that's the kind of flexibility we, we would have with the system. It's a complete, it's a, it's a different way of doing things than we have done in the past. Uh, and so it's, it's more of a replacement cab that is going to raise the same company. Um, which, to make sure I understand what you would answers maybe. In other words, I wanted to know what our monthly costs were right. in which you went through this long detail. But ultimately, under this new contract, we'll be paying at and $123,976 a month for a telephone. That's a year. That's, a year. Yeah. that's not a monthly cost. No. That's a yearly that's cost. Yearly. Yes. It's, it's about $10,470 uh, $10, a month, roughly. That's what we're paying at and if we do the same upgrade and we just stay the Interact Direct, we'll be paying about twelve thousand dollars a month, and that includes our telephone maintenance. Uh, right, that's what I was trying to include the telephone maintenance. Okay, so your answer to me was in years, and my question was in months. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> now I understand. Okay, hey David, I got an easy question. Uh, what's the life of the system? Well, and and it's that like our telephone system that we upgraded from several years ago, this system will not have a lifespan other than we will replace PCs as they break or monitors as they break. The software itself will be a continual upgrade that's included in our price. Uh, like our telephone system that we replaced with uh, four years ago, we said that we it will be the last telephone system we have to buy. This should be the last CAD system that we have to replace. We will have to replace monitors and such. You know, we. We replace PCs every three years because these are mission critical and we can't afford for them to fail us in the middle of a, of a disaster. So we replace PCs every three years. We replace servers every four to five years, depending on what the manufacturer recommends before they have a chance to fail. So that's what you'll see is you'll see just hardware replacements. You won't see cost for us to upgrade the actual software again. That'll be included in, our, in, in the ongoing maintenance and, and uh, cost. If, if we have to add additional positions, if we grow, then you will, you know, you'd see a, a call for new software licenses. So you, this should be the last CAD system that we have to purchase. Thank you. How long will the uh, the ten thousand you have on here, ten thousand three twenty three or ten thousand four per month? How long will that? How long is that good for? In other words, is there, is there a contract for so many years? Or? The initial contract is five years. Okay. And if, if I mean. Uh, unless there's some type of cost increase after that, you know, would expect the same. But the initial contract for a five-year period. Thank you. Two of the items on here, it, it, which we're purchasing, purchasing is a what is it, Solacom Move installation charge and a CAD Move installation charge. Is that move, that word Move is what I mean. Okay. Those, those are included in this document because originally when we. Uh, when AT&T proposed this, we were looking at moving into the new 911 center. So what they did was quote us an amount to move our current systems into the new 911 center within a 12-month period. If we make that move in 12 months, that's what it will cost us. In addition, that's not included in this contract amount. They ain't going to make that 12 months. And, and that's why it wasn't included. They, they offered okay, it as so, a, so it's an option. It, okay. it's an option. They offered it in case that we, if we did hit it, then we would know up uh, front for budgetary purposes what it will cost us to move the equipment. So AT&T would work along with Interact and Solacom to move it to ensure that we don't, we have little to no downtime hopefully when we make that move. 
Number six, discuss action to authorize the chairman to enter into a contract with APCO, that's Association of Public Safety Communication Officials. Officials. International to provide emergency dispatch protocols for the 911 center at a cost not to exceed sixty thousand uh, dollars. This this project uh, replaces our current emergency medical dispatch protocols. These are the protocols that we use when we give CPR instructions or we deliver babies and such over the telephone. This is what we instruct the citizens how we instruct them to do it. Uh, it's, it's a very structured uh, means of providing information to them. We've been using a local provider out of Metro, uh, Metro Atlanta for the last six or eight years. We're not very happy with the quality of their protocols, uh, the maintenance that they provided us, and, and their response to us when we have to uh, get changes made. And so we put out a uh, request for bids, and we've got three responses from APCO International, uh, Priority Dispatch, and Power Home. Uh, out of the three responses, APCO International was the lowest bid, and their product also is the most flexible when we meet our needs. But what this does is replaces our emergency medical dispatch, and it also provides us with emergency dispatch protocol. So we will also integrate our law enforcement and our fire dispatch uh, into a standardized protocol. Where before we've been entering the questions on ourselves, making up our own protocols, this will be a national standard protocol, and it will, it will standardize our dispatch across and call taking across the board for all three disciplines. This is a question that it, it's one of the curiosity thing. I mean, your bids range from. 57,000 to 100,000 to 257,000 for the same thing? Uh, they are essentially the same thing, but the products do, uh, they, they work in different ways. So the, the highest bidder, which came in just under 300,000, your priority dispatch, they are a very structured, very rigid protocol that allows very little flexibility on the part of the call taker. Uh, if you don't follow their instructions to the T, and you get a, and a lawsuit is filed, they won't back you up in court. Uh, Power phone, which is the, the mid-range bidder, they are a little bit less flexible, but their integration with our CAD system was less than what we less than what we wanted. We, we've heard some not good reports about their integration. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy that, I mean, you got one that was five times more than the lowest bidder. And actually the lowest bidder will allow us to go in and and uh, customize these protocols to what we need. And the highest bidder won't allow customization at all. So we get more flexibility from the lowest bidder. And it's a, it's a very widely used protocol. It's used in other places in Georgia and throughout the United States. Uh, David, I admire what you and Christine have done, and uh, they've been recognized throughout the Southeast. Uh, they've been invited to be guest speakers in a lot of the 911 conferences. So we're very proud of you and take advantage of those opportunities and thank you for what you did. Thank you. <clears throat> That's the conclusion of our regular business session. Uh, we have uh, had a request by Todd uh, Connell to go in the executive session for personnel. Do I hear a <clears throat> motion going to executive session? Motion to go into executive session for personnel. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 You, we do.